for the last few classes we have uh, discussed source coding purpose of which was to to remove redundancy from the source generated message and uh, that resulted in compression of the source uh, source uh, message and in this class we will discuss another component of a communication system called channel coding. Here the purpose is to introduce redundancy just the opposite to source coding in such a way that we can correct errors or distortion introduced by the channel at the receiver. So, uh, so we have discussed already uh, before in this course that a communication system will usually have have uh, in the transmitter side a source encoder, a channel encoder and then the, uh, the signal will be transmitted and then the signal will go through the channel, it will be uh, superimposed with noise and then the when the receiver receives the signal it has already some noise. Now, the noise distorts the signal or it, it um, introduces error to the message. Now, if we want to correct errors to some extent, we need to have some redundancy in the transmitted signal and that is the purpose of channel coding. So, we have here the channel. source then we have here source encoder which we have discussed before source coding and then we have already discussed a particular type of source coding technique um, called as known as lossless source coding techniques and in this code in this class we will discuss another component called channel coding. And then here we will have the decoders for this coding in the reverse order. So, here first we will have channel decoder, then we will have source decoder, then destination. So, we are going to discuss these components in this class. So, what is the purpose of channel coding? Let us see why should there be any channel encoder and channel decoder at all in a communication system. So, the purpose of channel coding, one is suppose that we transmit a block of symbols we are transmitting a block of symbols. Let us say uh, this the channel is a binary symmetric channel that we have already discussed different kind of channels. So, it is a binary symmetric channel 0 goes to 0 with some probability, 0 goes to 1 with some probability of error p, 1 goes to 0 with probability of error p, this is a binary symmetric channel. 0 to 0 is 1 minus p, this is also 1 minus p. So, if we are transmitting a sequence of bits like this through this channel, then there will be some errors introduced by this channel in this block. Now, if we want to be able to correct some errors in this block, then we should have some redundancy in the in this block. So, if we have redundancy in this block, we will be able to correct some errors and as a result, we will be able to reduce the effective or uh, resulting probability of error after correction of errors. The remaining probability of error will be less than p. So, to reduce probability of error for finite blocks 
of symbols. So, this is one purpose. Another way to view it is in terms of Shannon's work. We have already discussed um, these concepts before in the little bit of information theory we have discussed. And that is we have seen there that to every channel has a capacity, has a maximum limit which actually limits the amount of information that can be transmitted through the channel per use. So, so there we have also seen that that channel capacity can be achieved by using coding. And there also we have said that to actually approach channel capacity, we should have large block length codes and, um, and that, that block length should be very large to approach channel capacity. So, that also uh, motivates us to do channel coding. So, this is to approach channel capacity we need codes of large length. So, so we will see with example what we mean by this. Let us say we have a BSC binary symmetric channel with probability of error p equal to 0 0.25. That means, on average every fourth bit goes uh, in error. So, the capacity of this channel is known to be 1 minus h p, where h p is the entropy of uh, entropy function of p. So, this is h p is minus 0 0.25 log 0 0.25 minus 0 0.75 log 0 0.75 and that is same as 1 plus 0 0.25 log 4 1 by 4 and 0 0.75 log 3 by 4. So, log 1 by 4 is minus 2. So, 1 minus 0 0.25 into 2, then again we have here minus 0 0.75 multiplied by 2 that is for the 4 and then 3 we have plus 0 0.75 times log 3. Now, this is 0 0.5 and this is 1.5. So, 0 0.5 and 1.5 is 2. So, 1 minus 2 is that is minus 1 plus 0 0.75 times log 3 base 2 and that is 1.58. So, we get here this term is 1.19 minus 1 that is 0 0.19. Now, what do we see here? That though this channel is a binary channel meaning by it can uh, a bit can be transmitted and a bit will be received the channel does not really have one bit capacity, meaning by you cannot transmit one bit just one bit and receive one bit correctly always. So, there will be error sometimes. So, if you want to reduce the error and reduce the error to almost 0, how to do it? If we want to reduce the error to almost 0, we will not be able to transmit one bit of information per use of the channel. So, we can achieve according to Shannon's results, we can achieve 
this capacity for that for this channel meaning by for every bit we will be able to transmit 0.19 bits of information. What does it mean? It simply means that out of say every 100 bits we transmit we will be able to transmit 19 bits of information all the other bits should carry no information. So, so this motivates us to to say design a code. So, we will have say 100 bit 100 length code out of which 19 bits of information and 81 redundant bits because we have seen that for this channel to reduce the probability of error to almost 0, we cannot transmit more than 19 bits out of 100 uh, for uh, 19 bits of information per 100 bits of transmission. So, that means, if we want to use uh, transmit 100 bits blocks, then out of 100 bits 19 bits should be information and 81 bits should be redundant, they should depend on those 19 bits, they should carry no more no extra information. Now, even if we use this, this way, we, if we are, if we construct codes, codes means basically the num, the, the possible blocks that we will transmit. So, po all possible 100 hundred bit length blocks, bit sequences that we will transmit. And out of all those blocks, only 19 bits carry information, all the other bits are redundant. So, even if we use such a code, we will have some probability of error even after correction of the errors, because we will not be able to correct all errors. We are not saying that whatever is the number of errors channel introduces we will be able to correct, that is never possible. So, with this particular code, if we construct a code like this, then we will be able to correct many errors, but still there will be many types of errors which we will not be able to correct. So, for those also we will still have a bit of probability of error which will not be 0, but the probability of error bit error probability will be now reduced to less than 0.25. So, with this the probability of error is less than 0.25. Now, Shannon's uh, work also says that actually to bring probability of error to very uh, almost 0. So, this will reduce to some extent, but if you want to bring it to even uh, less value, then we will need to increase this length. Let us say we take 1000 lengths and then we take 190 bits of information. and then 810 redundant bits. If we use such a code, then our probability of error will be further reduced. So, this way as we increase length, we will see that the we, we can feel that the probability of error will reduce and this way we can go to almost 0 probability of error. So, this is what actually Shannon's work says and this is actually this this these results uh, Shannon's channel coding theorem and its proof actually led to more research in this area and people tried to find out construct how to construct codes and how to do encoding and decoding efficiently and all such uh, research in the area of coding theory. Now, let us see some examples of codes. The simplest codes which will not require any rigorous background, we will first uh, discuss those. Say so the first, the most simple example is 
repetition code where if you want to transmit 0 just transmit repeat 0 n number of times n may be 10 it may be 5 it may be 100. So, transmit 0 n times and if we want to transmit 1 transmit 1 n, num n times. So, the code code is actually the set of blocks that will be transmitted. So, in this case the code is all 0 and all 1. It has only two code words all zeros and all ones. So, you can see that obviously using such a code you can transmit only one bit of information using the code. So, because there are two possibilities, so you can transmit only one bit. If there are four code words, you can transmit two bits. If you, you have 16 code words, you can transmit four bits and so on. So, these are this is called the code that is the set of all such blocks that will be transmitted actually and these individual blocks will be called code words. Okay. So, using this we can see now what is the rate of the code meaning by what is the rate of information we are transmitting per use of the channel. We are to transmit a single code word we are using the channel n times because we are transmitting n bits, but how much information are we transmitting using those n bits? We are transmitting only one bit of information. Though it has we are transmitting n bits, it is carrying only one bit of information. So, the rate of the code is 1 by n that is per bit we are transmitting 1 by n bits of information. Rate is 1 by n and then how many errors can we correct? So, so, how would we decode? We know that the channel will introduce some errors. So, one obvious way, one intuitively satisfying way is to see how many zeros we have received and how many ones we have received in the block. If the number of zeros is more than number of ones, then we will assume that actually zero was transmitted and ones are because of the channel introduced errors. So, if we actually do the decoding at the receiver that way that is take the majority number of bits, then how many errors can you correct? You can see that if the number of errors is more than n by 2 actually the floor of n by 2 that is if suppose we have n equal to 5, then if the number of errors is less than equal to 2, then we will still have majority number of correct bits. So, 3 bits will be correct and 2 bits will be wrong. So, we will be able to decode correctly. Whereas, if we have 3 or more bits of errors, then majority number of bits will be in error and so, we will be we will not be able to decode correctly, we will decode wrongly. So, the number of errors that we can correct is obtained by dividing 5 by 2 and taking the integer part of that. So, what is div uh, result of dividing 5 by 2? It is 2.5. So, 2 bits can be corrected. So, only take the integer part and that number is called floor of n by 2. So, take this is if you plot integers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, then suppose you have a number here, the floor of that is this, ceiling of this number is this. So, ceiling of it is 3, floor of it is 2. So, this is this notation, this is floor notation and this is ceiling notation. Now, so we have seen here that if n is the length of the code, length of the repetition code, then the number of errors that we can correct is up to floor of n by 2. This is for repetition code. We will also see another very commonly used code called parity check code. So, here check code. So, 
So, here what is done is you take n minus 1 bits information bits and add 1 bit parity. So, we will have n bits block out of n bits n minus 1 number of bits are information bits and the 1 bit is redundant that depends on all the information bits and it is the parity of the information bits. What is parity? Parity is nothing but count the number of ones in the n minus 1 information bits. If the number of ones is odd, the parity is 1. If the number of ones is even, the parity is 0. So, you can get this parity actually simply by taking XOR of all the bits. XOR of n number of bits is nothing but it is 1 if the number of ones is odd and it is 0 if number of ones is uh, even. So, the parity bit can be obtained from the information bits that way just by taking XOR of all the information bits. So, now if we do use this code the what what is the code? The code now code C in this case is set of all vectors x naught to x n minus 1 set of all vectors are these are binary these are components are binary. We will call the set here f 2 we will discuss we will I uh, will tell you in a moment why we denote it by this symbol it is a set of 0 and 1. So, this x naught till x n minus 1 are from this set each one is either 0 or 1. So, take all such binary n tuples such that the XOR of all these bits is 0. So, so take so now XOR of all these bits XOR of 2 bits x naught plus x 1 this XORing operation will be denoted by plus because it satisfies all the conditions satisfied by the usual plus operation of integers or real numbers. And similarly multiplication of 2 bits is just the AND operation. So, x naught times x 1 is AND and this is x or. So, so parity of this is nothing but summation of x i, i equal to 0 to n minus 1. So, this is basically x or of all the bits. So, this is 0. So, we take all possible n tuples of bits such that the x or of all the bits is 0. That means, x n minus 1 is the parity of all the other bits because if the number of ones here all the other bits is 1 then x n uh, if the number of ones is even then x n minus 1 has to be 0 because the total there are even number of bits and if the number of ones in this n minus 1 bits is odd then n minus x n minus 1 must be 1 to make the total number of ones even. So, we see that this condition implies that x n minus 1 is the parity of all the other bits and similarly any bit is the parity of all the other bits. So, this is really parity check code we can say that we take these x naught to x n minus 2 as the information bits and the x n minus 1 bit is the parity bit of all those information bits. So, this is our parity check code now how many errors can we correct? actually we cannot correct any error using this because the distance of the, the, the there are too many code words and there is not much difference between the code words. We will see in detail what we mean by this, but we will just, just discuss the capability of this code here. So, this code can detect at least at most uh, one error. What does it mean? If the channel introduces one error or no error, no error there is no question of detecting. If the channel introduces one error, we will be able to detect that is no at the receiver that 
there is some error in this block. So, how do we know that? We will simply take this received block and see how many ones we have that is calculate the parity of the block and if it is even that is if the parity is 0 then then there is no error that is it is a code word and if the number of bits is number of 1 bit is uh, odd then we know that there is some error because such a code word no code word has odd number of ones. So, the what we have received was not transmitted something else was transmitted. So, we will be able to detect one error up to one error if there are two errors again we may not be able to detect because it may happen that two, two errors are introduced and the parity of the code word is even now 0 that is the number of ones is still even because two bits have changed and it was even number of ones before. So, after changing two bits also the number of uh, one, uh, one bit will be uh, will be still even. Okay. So, we say here that it is it can detect detect one error it can detect one error. And what is the rate of the code? How many bits of information we are transmitting per bit? We have n number of bits and out of those n number of bits we are transmitting n minus 1 bits of information the only 1 bit is redundant. So, rate is n minus 1 by n per bit we are transmitting n minus 1 number of n minus 1 by n bits of information because total n minus 1 bits of information is transmitted in n bits. Okay, so, the rate of this code is n minus 1 by n and we can detect one error up to one error using this code. Now, to discuss these techniques in a more systematic manner we need to introduce some terms. One is Hamming distance. Suppose we have two vectors x and y, x is x naught, x 1, x n minus 1. We will assume binary code, so all these are binary and y another y naught, y 1, y n minus 1, two vectors. Hamming distance between those these two vectors denoted by this is defined as the number of components that are different in x and y. So, means we will check whether x naught is same as x y naught. If they are same, we do not count that. If x 1 is not equal to y 1, we count 1, then we will see how many are different. That is the Hamming distance between those two. So, th that is a measure of how different these two vectors are. If there are more number of bits that are different in these two vectors, then the they, they are more different. So, this is called the Hamming distance. Let us take an example. Suppose x is 1 0 0 1 1 and y is 1 1 0 0 1. Let us see what is the Hamming distance of these two. This first bit is same, second bit is different. So, 1, third bit is same, fourth bit is different and fifth bit is same. So, we have two bits which are different, second and fourth. So, the Hamming distance is 2. So, we have seen what is Hamming distance between two vectors of binary numbers. Now, if we are given a code, given a code, what is a code? The code, a code is a set of n tuples, a code of length n is a set of n tuples of binary numbers 0 1. 
So, binary intervals, set of binary intervals, not all binary intervals, but some of the binary intervals. Then, given a code, what is the minimum distance d minimum of the code? Is take all possible vectors, take any two vectors from C, say x, y in C and x not equal to y, do not take the same code word for x and y, take two different code words and see what is the minimum distance, uh, see what is the distance between x and y, we will get some minimum, uh, get some distance, take some other pair of code words, take the distance and that way we take all pairs of code words and take their distances and take the minimum of all those distances that is the minimum distance of the code. What does it mean? Pictorially it means that in the n dimensional space, so you have n, n tuples of binary number. So, in that space you have some code words, non, not all points are code words, not all n tuples are code words, some of them are code words. So, we have some points like this which are code, code words, so that, that set is the code. There are other points here which are not code words. Now, take this minimum distance means take two points which are nearest to each other. So, for example, take this distance, you can see that this distance is less than distance between this and this. So, take see if there are closer points, this distance may be nearer, uh, this distance may be smaller. So, take that distance, take the minimum of the distances. So, then this distance take all these distances, all possible distances, then take the minimum, that is the minimum distance of the code. Now, once we have, once we have defined this term, let us see for the two codes we have already discussed, what is the minimum distance? First repetition code, here you take two code words, they are nothing but zero, all zeros and all ones, that is all. So, number of bits that are different, that is the Hamming distance between those, those two code words is simply n. So, d mean for the repetition code of length n is n and we have already seen the rate is 1 by n and number of errors that we can correct. t equal to floor of n by 2 errors. And for parity check code, what is the minimum distance? It is 2, let us see. Suppose we take any two vectors, any two code words, any two code words to different code words must be different in the first n minus 1 bits itself. So, in the first n minus 1 bits say x naught, x n minus 2, x n minus 1, this is one code word and we take another code word y naught, y n minus 2, y n minus 1, another vector. What is the distance between these two you want to find? The minimum distance will come only when the information bits here are different from information bits here only by 1 bit. If the difference between this and this, the, the, this, uh, the distance between this and this is 1, then these two also will be different because either it has, this has, if this has even number of 1s, this will have odd number of 1s because there is only 1 bit that is different. So, then this will be 1 and this will be 0 because the parity of this will be 0 and parity of this will be 1. So, this bit also will be different. So, the Hamming distance will be 2. Similarly, if this is odd, this is even, if this is odd and that only one bit is different in these two, then this will have even number of 1s. So, this will be 0, this will be 1, so this two, this bit, this bit will be different. So, again the distance is 2. But if these two n minus 1 tuples till here are, are different by more than 1 bits, then we know anyway that the minimum, the distance between them must be at least 2. 
because here itself there are two bits which are different, two or more bits which are different. So, if the distance between these two, if there are more than one bits that are different in these two, then also the Hamming distance between these two code words will be at least two. So, as a result we can say that the minimum Hamming distance of the code is two, because there are there are there is a pair of code words we can find between which the distance is 2 and there is no other pair of code words which has distance more than 2, uh, which has distance uh, less than 2. So, the minimum Hamming distance is 2 and rate we have already seen rate is n minus 1 by n number of errors we can detect only one error cannot correct can detect one error. Okay. So, this is about minimum distance. Now, from if we know the minimum distance of a code, can we say how, man, how many errors can be corrected? We should be able to do that because minimum distance tells us that the code words in the code are separated by this much distance, they are far apart, if the distance is large they are far apart. So, if, the, the, if there are some errors, then we can still this will not go near other code words. If this is a code word and there are code words far from this, then if there is some error, then this will not the probability that this will go near any other code word will be small, because this distance is too much. So, for that we need so many errors and that probability is low. So, we will be able to correct more errors if the minimum distance is more, but we can exactly specify how many errors we can correct. Let us say these are the code words and this is a code we transmit this code and suppose the minimum distance is this, this these two this has the minimum distance in the code. So, the, the worst thing in, can happen when this code word is transmitted and the number of errors is more than above this. So, this is the circle in which all the points for all the points here this code is the near this code word is the nearest. So, how do we decode sorry decode take if you receive r the vector r of binary numbers, then the maximum likely that is m l transmitted code word is the nearest code word that is if we receive this this then take the nearest code word and say this is the nearest code word, then most probably this was transmitted. The probability that this was transmitted is less than probability that this was transmitted. So, the maximum likely code word that was transmitted is the nearest code word that can be proved also. So, we see that this is the way to do decoding that is if you receive a vector here take the nearest code word, nearest in the sense of Hamming distance. So, calculate the Hamming distance from each code word and take the nearest one. So, if we take the nearest one, then what will happen is that we can form the form the points from which this code word is nearest. So, this is the decision region of this code word that is if we receive all these vectors, then we will decode this vector this code word. If we receive all these points inside this circle this will be the nearest to all these points. So, we will decode this. So, this, this will this will be decoding regions. Now, if we do the, that way, we can see that suppose there are less than d by 2 number of errors, number of errors is less than d by 2. Then, this distance from what we receive is less than d by 2. So, distance to this which is which has distance d from here here this distance will be greater than d by 2. 
because this is less than d by 2, this extra will be greater than d by 2 because this total is d. So, this much is less than d by 2. So, this much must be greater than d by 2. So, we see that and any other code word you take this distance is at least d, because d is the minimum distance. So, again this distance from here to all these distances will be greater than d by 2 that is greater than here this distance. So, this will be the nearest. So, we have seen that if the number of errors is less than d by 2 where d is the minimum distance of the code then we will be able to decode the code word correctly by decoding this way taking the nearest code word we will take the correct code word. So, so we have seen in other words that if we have a code with minimum distance d then we can correct all the errors if the number of errors is less than d by 2. So, how many errors can you correct? Take d by 2, take the integer part of d by 2 that is floor of d by 2 and all errors number of errors less than equal to floor of d by 2 can be corrected because these numbers are less than d by 2 less than equal to d by 2. This is uh, actually d minus 1 by 2. We want it to be strictly less than d by 2. So, we need to add here uh, subtract minus 1. So, that we can put equality here. Okay. So, so, using this concept now if we have a code with d equal to 3 minimum distance equal to 3 then how many errors can we correct? We can correct 1 error. If we have d equal to 5 how many errors can we correct? We can correct 2 errors. If we have d equal to 4 how many errors can we correct? 4 minus 1 by 2 floor of this. So, this is 3 by 2 floor that is 1.5 floor that is 1. So, we can still correct t equal to 1. d equal to 3 also will give us in this formula will give us 1 error. So, you can see if the distance is at least 3 if there are 2 code words at distance 3 if there is 1 error it will come here, but distance from here is 2 1 2. So, so this will be still nearest. So, we will be able to correct the error successfully. Okay. Now, according to this we see that the repetition code which has repetition code has distance we said it has distance 2. So, it has distance uh, repetition code has distance n. So, we can see that we can correct it is not uh, n by 2, but n minus 1 by 2 according to this formula and that is correct. If n is for example, even like we considered 4, we will be able to correct only 2 errors not n by 2. So, n minus 1 by 2 floor number of errors. Similarly, for parity check codes what was the distance? Distance was 2. So, we cannot correct any error because 2 minus 1 by 2 floor is half floor that is 0. We can correct 0 errors, but we can detect 1 error. Okay. Now, now, we have just now said that we will denote we will denote a uh, denote this set 0 and 1 as f 2. Why? Because this is the notation for a field. We have discussed already about field in a different module of this course, where it meant that this has two operations plus and multiplication, addition and multiplication such so that it satisfies certain conditions just like real numbers and complex numbers. But this field is not like real numbers or complex numbers, this is a finite set, but it still satisfies some conditions which are nice. So, even this field. Now, we are considering codes with components from this field. So, we can do still addition multiplication. Addition is addition is nothing but XOR, multiplication is nothing but AND. Under these two operations, this satisfies nice conditions like real numbers and complex numbers. We can have vectors, we can do matrix multiplication, all that can be done with this addition and multiplication. So, the code defined this code we are considering is called Hamming code.
and the code is constructed this way. We are considering a particular code called 74 Hamming code. We will see why it is called 74. Length is 7, n equal to 7, and it is defined this way. Now, let's take a matrix H which has all non zero 3 tuples. Let's take 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, then 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, then 1, 1, 1. So, there are 7 columns, all possible non zero 3 tuples of binary numbers is there in the columns. So, there are total 2 to the power 3 that is 8 3 tuples out of them 1 is all 0 that is excluded all the others are here as columns of H. Now, the code is defined as take all vectors of length 7 that is x is x naught to x 6 such that H x transpose consider x as a vector write it this way. So, this will be a column vector and then h x transpose is this then h that should be 0 vector this is again a column vector of length 3 this is a 0 vector of length 3 take all such vectors such all those vectors which if you multiply this way will give you 0. So, those vectors form a code and this code is called Hamming code, Hamming 7 4 Hamming code. Now, we will see that this code can correct one error. How? Suppose we have transmitted x, it is a code word, it is in the code C. Now, we have suppose one error, if there is no error then this will, will receive the same code word. So, we can we need not correct any error. But if there is one error, error then also we will see that we will be able to correct. How do we do that? Suppose we receive an error where the third bit is in error. Then we will receive this, we will receive x plus 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 x plus this vector because this plus remember is xor. So, the first bit the this addition the first component of this will be first component of this x naught plus 0, x naught x or 0 is x naught itself. If you x or with any bit, x or 0 with any bit, it will give you the same bit. So, zeros do not change the components, whereas 1 changes the component. So, that particular the third bit will be in error because we have added 1 here. So, we can represent the received bit as x, the transmitted sequence, received code, transmitted code word plus a vector like this, if there is only 1 error. So, now we will at the receiver, we will do this operation. We have received y, we will simply multiply y transport with transport with x. So, we can write it as x plus 0 0 1 0 0 0 0. Then h this can be written as this transpose this transpose. So, plus h 0 0 1 0 0 0 0. Now, this is 0 because we have transmitted x, x is a code word. So, it satisfies h x transpose equal to 0. We have transmitted such a code word, such a vector. So, this is 0 plus now what is h times this column vector? Column vector has 1 only in the third column, third row. So, it will the result of multiplying h with 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 will be 0 0 1 the third column of this. Please check it afterwards, but you can see that if you multiply any matrix by a vector like that 0 0 1 and then all again 0, then it will pick up the third column. So, the result will be 0 0 1 this will be 0 0 1. Now, once we take this, we will take this result, this result will be 0 0 1. If the fourth bit was in error, the result will be 1 1 0. If the sixth bit is in error, we will have 0 1 1 as this multiplication. So, we will just take this result and see which column of H it is. If it is 0, then we know that it is a code word. The Y itself is a code word, so we, there is no error. If there is, this is not 0, then we will see where which column of H it is because all the non-zero columns are here, all the non-zero 3 tuples are here. So, we will pick that particular column and we will know that that bit was in error. So, if if this was here, we will see that this is 
the third column. So, you know the third bit is in error x 2 is in error. So, we will invert that and that is our code word that was the thing which was transmitted. So, we will know which bit was in error this way and then we can correct that bit. So, this is the way Hamming code can be used to correct up to one bit. So, we have discussed so far one error detecting code where up to one error can be detected, but not corrected that is the parity check simple parity check code. Here in the Hamming code 7 for Hamming code we have seen that some um, we have seen this that this is a code which can be used to correct up to one error. So, Hamming distance of this code we can guess that Hamming distance because number of errors that can be corrected is 1 and we can check that actually 2 errors cannot be corrected. So, 1 is the number of bits that can be corrected. So, 1 is greater than equal to d minus 1 by 2 floor. So, that from here you will get d is d this is less than equal to d is greater than equal to 2 times 1 plus 1 that is 3. So, Hamming distance of Hamming code the minimum Hamming distance is greater than equal to 3, but again we can check very easily that it is actually equal to 3. So, we cannot correct more error that is obvious from here to correct 2 errors we need minimum distance at least 5. So, for 3 we can correct exactly 1 error at most 1 error. Okay. Now, how many code words are there in this code? We see here that the code is the all code words or all vectors which when you multiply with h gives you 0. So, how many solutions of this matrix are there that is the question those many code words are there. So, you can see from here that the rank of this matrix is 1 because there is identity matrix here and there are 7 here. So, so the dimension of the solution will be 4 and that means there will be 2 to the power 4 number of code words. So, if you do not understand what is dimension of the solution, how to find that it is basically number of the dimension of the solution space will be the, the n minus the rank 3. So, dimension is 4. So, dimension of of C is 4. So, number of code words is 2 power 4 because it is so it is like set of all 4 triples. So, so we have 2 to the power 4 number of codes the rate of the code. So, we can transmit 4 bits using those 7 bits. So, the rate of the code is 4 by 7. So, this 4 is the, the dimension is the parameter which we said here 7 4 7 is the length and 4 is the dimension. So, rate of the code is 4 by 7 d mean as you said before is 3 number of errors that can be corrected is 1. So, this is all about Hamming code for in this uh, course we will not discuss more and there are some other names of codes we will ju I will just mention if you are interested you can study from books later, but background record for that is more than what we can handle in this short span of this course. So, most very popular codes are like RS that is Reed Solomon code, BCH and then convolutional codes. LDPC code, these are now all these codes we have discussed in this class and also the codes which we have not discussed, but just mentioned in the last slide that is Reed Solomon codes, BCH codes, convolutional codes and LDPC codes. This can be found in different books for all the basic material in coding theory that we have discussed in this class can be we can look at any information theory book like McKay, Gallagher, which we have also mentioned before while discussing source coding. And you can also look at the basic uh, introduction chapter of Johannesson and Jigangjirov, title is convolutional codes. And then there is a book on coding theory, error correcting codes, the title is error correcting codes, 
or something similar and the authors are Lean and Costello. So, in this book you can find more on coding theory like RS code, BCH code, convolutional codes and LDPC codes those can be found in this book all. and this is specially for convolutional codes, but the introduction chapter of this will give us some block codes also. That is all, please uh, I will encourage you to read these books, they are very good books, thank you.